Activating light speed. Don't waste your money. Well, let me explain. What I mean is invest your money on a new MacBook Pro, but keep the cost to a bare minimum. But let's face it, that would have been a terrible video title. In this video, I'm not just gonna repeat what you know already. I'll go through some of the options to help you save some of your hard earned cash when buying the M1X MacBook Pro. Because Apple, you know, they are out to get your cash. Awesome products, but yeah, they can be quite sneaky. Given we're about to hear from Apple, like in a few hours about this long awaited machine, I think it's a good time to go over some of the cost saving options before you hit that buy now button on this new M1X MacBook Pro. And when we're about to drop two, two and a half, three or 4,000 on a new laptop, I think there are a couple of things to watch out and maybe try to keep that cost to a bare minimum. If I learned anything from Apple recently is that they will absolutely make us believe that we need certain features that will increase the total cost of the product. Apple really hyped up the M1 iPad Pro and made some of us believe that having 16 gig RAM was the right option, but that was a few extra hundred dollars that was 100% unnecessary. It's been five months with this product and having that extra memory made zero difference for me. So I really believe that there is a small portion of Apple consumers that are really going to take advantage of that fully specced out MacBook Pro, but judging by how incredible the M1 was, I think there will be a large number of people, including myself, who don't need to fully spec it out. In late 2019, when I got my Intel MacBook Pro, I did see the value in getting a higher spec CPU and going for the 64 gig RAM because I fully intended to use that for my video editing. Having 64 gig RAM and you know when you're working with software that is optimized to take advantage of that extra memory, it makes perfect sense to go as high as you can afford. But it annoys the heck out of me that less than two years later, this Intel MacBook Pro is grinding to a halt and the battery won't charge anymore, for example. But that's gonna be a different video. Right to repair anyone? Right, the first option on cost saving for you is the most obvious one, which is the size. We know that both 14 inch and 16 inch will have the exact same spec, so that's a clear cut recommendation here. If you use your MacBook Pro at your desk in a clamshell mode all the time, you know, whilst connect to a larger display like this one, then the 14 inch is the perfect option for you. It's gonna be more compact, you can store it out of the way a little bit easier than the 16 inch without losing any of the performance. If we were talking traditional laptops, you could say that heating could become an issue, on that smaller version, but with the M1X, that problem is likely to go away. And of course, if you're traveling and taking your laptop away with you and working on trains and airplanes, for example, then the 14 inch is again, the obvious choice. The next most obvious cost saving component is going to be storage. We're due to get up to eight terabyte SSD as an option, which is incredible, but with this new M1X MacBook Pro, we're also getting more ports, and with that, the option to hook this up to fast performance storage options, which means you can keep the local storage to a reasonable size and take the advantage of that Thunderbolt speed for external storage. Sure, you lose some of the convenience of having everything in the internal SSD, but you really don't lose out a lot in terms of transfer speeds and performance. I would caveat this by saying that if you have a heavy workflow of generating hundreds of gigs in an image, audio, and video files, then one terabyte for me should be the minimum for you. I would only recommend 512 gig if my workflow was very light, maybe a photographer who is not really generating more than 20, 30 gig a week. In that scenario, it would be very manageable to have an external storage set up where you keep your files locally, you know, the ones that you're working on all the time, but every month you archive them off to an external SSD. Something like these SanDisk ones or, or bigger ones like this last C one. Before we talk about the next chapter, just a quick reminder to like this video if you're getting any value from it. And if you enjoy my stuff, it would mean the world if you subscribe to my channel. That's it. When it comes to the display, I'm not sure we're gonna get any different options, but if we do, my previous point on size still applies. If you're using MacBook in a clamshell all the time, then the display is irrelevant, right? And even if you take it out occasionally, does your workflow really benefit from having a higher display spec? As I said, I'm not convinced they'd offer different displays, but you never know. Should I mention the notch? Okay, I'll mention it. I don't really care, to be honest. It doesn't bother me if we're getting more screen real estate, a webcam that is not a potato, super thin bezels, and maybe face ID. Well, I don't mind the notch. Plus, let's not forget, there's a menu bar at the top that will probably cover most of that anyway. The notch could be as simple as Apple just being Apple and keeping their products recognizable and trying to stand out from the competition. I don't know, it does feel like a weird move and maybe Apple just like to divide opinion, who knows. Since we're talking about design, the touch bar disappearing might annoy some people, but I'm sure we'll get over it. 
it's not much use really, right? I personally only use it for emojis in the rare event where I'm not using my laptop in a clamshell mode. And MagSafe, meh, whatever. Back to the point of this video, the M1X MacBook Pro will be a powerhouse. When Apple brags about speed and power before the release, they're usually about to drop something incredible. So if you can wait for the first reviews and really see how the different specs perform, that would be the safest thing to do from a financial perspective. But if like me, having the M1X tomorrow would start saving you time and therefore returning the value, then it's best to be sensible and only go for the top specs if your workflow is really high end, like heavy video editing, 3D modeling and things like that. Exciting times again. I will be unboxing the M1X MacBook Pro very soon, hopefully, as well as reviewing it and doing some accessory videos for it. So stay tuned and I'll see you and your smiling faces on the next one. Bye.